bit about yourself and a bit about Front 242? Would be good to know. Uh, can you be a little more specific? Because, yeah, I can, I, I can talk to you about that during probably 40 hours in a row. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, how did you get into music? I mean, obviously, when you were younger, what were you listening to that drove you to um, start from? I think two? our common references were not, um, not at all English, like most of the, the things we would hear on the radio, um, we were, the four of us, very much into German music, uh, bands like Kraftwerk, um, mm -hmm. and even the, 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 the bands who started around the same area in the beginning, in the middle of the 70s, like La Düsseldorf, or the these English uh, these uh, sorry these German bands like Bakken, Neu, things like that, and um, that was our common base. And uh, these are really the bands that got us interested in in making music ourselves, because obviously it sense. was um, it didn't require as many musical skills as what we could guess was the base uh, for for English bands. So the fact that this this music, uh, this German music was based more on um, similar patterns, repeating over and over, being a little bit mesmerizing, um, like a sort of trance. Uh, we yes. thought, okay, maybe we can start making music without having to develop a, 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 a real musical uh, background and 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 um, and and, uh, and musical skills as, as as much as the the English bands do. So I think yeah. that was that was probably one of the reasons why this music caught our ears. And we thought that that's the kind of thing that we are able to do. But you did it in a, although you can hear slight influences, but you did it in a different way. Uh, you stood out. Yes and no, I'm not sure. We, we just, from the beginning, we wanted to, to make it quite simple, but to, um, because we were, at least, well, Daniel was not into sports, but the three others, we were active in a, in a sport team, and we all said we we could add this sort of physical dimension that very often um, is is just not there on stage for yeah. most of these bands. And we thought, well, okay, what can we do? What's the way to uh, to show us to show ourselves on stage with a um, maybe a different way of moving. We had, of course, there was um, probably the first band that we, that we that we thought was interesting for us was uh, Deutsche Amerikanische Freundschaft, the DF, DAF. Um, but at that time, they, they had the complete name, and Deutsche Amerikanische Freundschaft. Um, and Gabi singing and dancing like, 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 a, like a madman. That was, we thought that could be, that. That's a that's a fat gadget also. And, uh, his performances yes. were really uh, even if he was uh, on the on the on the English side, but he was that was the kind of thing that we that we wanted to do. So we loved the, the music by Kraftwerk, and we thought, okay, the way they appear mm. on stage, absolutely fantastic for what they are, but we don't want to show ourselves on stage like 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 they do. Because they didn't move, did they? Not really. So, sorry, say that again. They they didn't move. No, they didn't move at all. But that they was were just still. Okay. That was completely okay for the music they produced. Um, yeah. They were, you know, I think at some point in some of their videos and in some of their shows, they started to move, but uh, they, were, they were sort of dancing, but I think they quickly realized that that was not the right way of uh, no. of, of uh, showing themselves. 
No, they were they were different in another way, weren't they? Or st still are, they I are, think. Yeah, they they are. They are I, I have read some books about music. Uh, there are people pretending or writing that they are they were not the most original, they were not the most creative, but they were by far the most popular. And for what uh, for the for the roads that they have paved for me, they are the absolute top. And uh, are they are all well well not all because they are people who were not there from the beginning, but uh, Ralph Uter and uh, Florian Schneider who. Uh, sadly passed away mm -hmm. uh, when was it one and a half year ago are, are, I think are above, about one, above one, 30, 30. Yeah. But they, are, they are still there and they are for me um, they are just geniuses yeah yeah definitely without a doubt um, so let's have a look um, today you're still you're obviously still going strong you still headline what keeps you so inspired to keep to keep going as you do? Oh, it's uh, I, I'm not sure that we are really inspired. We are, we have been trying for uh, for years to make new songs. There will be a few new songs in the show, but basically, what what keeps us going is the. Is the fun first? It, first, it's the uh, the fun to be there together, and yeah. um, and it's the fact that there are still organizers and audiences who want to see us perform live. Uh, I mean, it's uh, yeah. we don't need that. I mean, I'm, I, I am not at all an addict. If uh, tomorrow there is no interest, uh, there is no interest from anybody, I would be. Uh, it would be completely okay for me to stop. Uh, I have other things to do in life that can bring me happiness, but maybe one of the most intense things that I have experienced in, in my life is the fact um, that I could be active in a band like that. We are very good friends. Yeah. We, uh, even with our technicians, it's a very nice group. We uh, function together. Really, in a in a in a smooth, organized, um, well thought, I think um, way, and and it's just pure fun. It's just pure fun. You can see that. You can see that that you you're actually out there and you're actually enjoying it. Yes, I think if it if it had been uh, if it had become with the time a, just a work or a business like any other uh, any other one, the the flame uh, would have gone out a long time ago. There is yeah, much more. Than that. So. There is much more than that in this, uh, in what we do here. And the cat wants to jump on my lap again. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he loves you. That's the main thing. Now I've got to got to mention it. Headhunter. Yeah. How did that become? Or what do you think? How did it become such an iconic front two four two song? I mean, it it really is. You know what? When we when we did this album front by front, we had uh, between 10 and 12 songs. And uh, we never, in the band, we never envisioned that song as being the, the single for the campaign. It's our record company who said, um, they said, okay, that, that is going to be the one to, uh, to become the, the headliner or whatever. We, we had yeah. a completely uh, different idea. And they were completely right. Yeah, definitely. Also, um, to be honest, when we recorded it, when we played it live the first times, we thought, ah, no, no. <laughs> but uh, in the long run, they were totally okay. They, they were totally right. Um, and it's a song, you know, the more we started to play it, the more we enjoyed playing it. In the beginning, it was just, oh, yeah. no, just not, not, a very, not a very good one. We had, um, what we had in mind was much more a song like uh, First In, First Out, or Until Death Us Do Part, and not at all Ed and Her. So, but it was like that. It was like that. There are sometimes very strange things in life. Um, 
it's it's very difficult to 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 uh, when you when you create your stuff you have your own ID your own references your own favorites but I must I must really say from the start this one was not one of, uh, of our favorites yeah incredible isn't it it's like that. and even uh, even the video I you know you know um, yeah the but the video. Uh, the video, that's because the record company said, okay, we want that song to become the headliner. Um, we are going to hire Anton Corbijn, who was uh, very uh, very famous at that time from previous works with, uh, with great artists. And he just perfectly underlined uh, everything that needed to be underlined. He brought our music into a, something visual that would make it work even better. Uh, because he had that vision, and when he, while we were we were there, while he was filming and explaining us his ideas, we thought he's completely wrong. I mean, you know the joke about the the, the, the fact that we at some point we told him it was not just a joke. We told him seriously, Anton, uh, are you are you sure you got the name of the song right? It's not. Egg Hunter, it's Egg Hunter, <laughs> and, uh, but he knew exactly what he was doing, and uh, and that was great, but that was sort of beyond our our control, our, our what we could have imagined, but that, that is what, yeah. that's what's great, you know, sometimes, I, 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 I hate the idea of comparing ourselves to artists, because none of us claims the status of, of uh, being an artist, yeah. but we all have uh, our own favorite artists in other um, in other realms than, than than music, especially in painting for myself. But the others, uh, Patrick, it's more um, architects and things like that. But um, among the painters that I know, I know that some of them were were are very successful for certain paintings that they did and uh, very often it's absolutely not for the painting that they personally prefer in their entire um, yeah. production so these things happen and at some point uh, people like you for one thing that you did um, especially and it's maybe something that you don't think in your own eyes is, 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 is anything special. It's, it's very strange. Yeah. But that, that's the way. That's when you go public, you are exposed to this type of uh, happy accidents. Yeah, and it certainly was, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was, definitely. Wow. Was. Yeah. You've only got to look at YouTube and see how many views it has, and it's like, wow. Well, yeah, and, and, and on the top of everything, um, I think now on YouTube, we're getting close to 7 million, but there was a previous yeah. version of the song that was deleted because it was not uh, promoted by the record company and it had reached 26 millions already. So in ah. fact, the number of views on YouTube it is much, much higher than what is uh, what it is wow. today. It was, it, it's really much, much higher. It is, but it is such, it is a brilliant song. I mean, there's no taking away. I don't agree. <laughs> but, if you, no. <laughs> <laughs> but if you say it, it's nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just explained you why I don't really agree. But <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's amazing. But we can, see, we can um, see the difference in the audience when that song starts. Uh, there is really the, the the tension in the in the venue is uh, is much much higher. Yeah, strange, isn't it? Yeah, strange and nice and uh, yeah, nice in a way, isn't it? Of course, it is. Yeah. It shows appreciation Absolutely. for what you've done, which is what you want. And we are very um, grateful for that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What about the image? I mean, you've, you've brought an image of the name Front 242 for a start. It seems somehow it's a very powerful name. And then you've got the image on stage that is very, very powerful. Even your folk photography, you know, you see the pictures of you. And you're all standing there, and it's just always this iconic front two four two, unmistakable. It's you guys. You have this in 
who created that image? Whose idea was that? Uh, I think it was a common it was a common agreement that uh, we would never go on stage dressed like you know normal people in, in, in daily clothing or whatever. We we always wanted to uh, a little bit to, to, to a little more strike the imagination and, and show ourselves more powerfully and it's uh, it's really from the beginning Daniel and Patrick um, had studied visual arts and they knew how to sort of sort of make this um, sort of shine or, or appear and then we started working with people because for a while we could manage we could keep it within the band and, and we are always very reluctant to give the control to people uh, from the outside. Mm -hmm. But at some point we we realized, okay, now we are focused on our music and we cannot follow the development of the uh, um, of image um, anymore. So, of course, working with Anton Corbijn was was really interesting. Then for our um, for the T-shirts, for example, for the merchandising, we met a French um, creator called um, Auger. Uh, suddenly, I forgot his his first name. Etienne Auger. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If he listens, to it, he's gonna kill me. Yeah. Etienne Auger is just great. Um, he makes uh, great videos. Most of the videos that are played during our shows, he made them. Uh, he designed our T-shirts. So we and he, wow. we had uh, we had long long talks with him. He understands the universe of the band and is is absolutely perfect to translate it into uh, images so but there are not that many people now we we worked with other people recently also with Etienne and other um, uh, 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 a collective two people called Mossmeister who also made pictures for us and uh, so but but it's a, always a very very small team of people but yeah. that we know we can trust. Exactly. You need that. You need we, that. We need to, to, to sort of be uh, a restricted team. It's very difficult to get in there, but as soon as um, we can, we know we can trust people, then generally they, they, they are with us for a long time. Just like our technicians, uh, the guy who does the lights, Chris Norens, uh, he has been with us for more than 20 years. The guy who's going to do the sound, Yellow the Croc, also has started working with us almost 20 years also. So it's it's really oh. a team of people that we trust and, and uh, we don't need more. And uh, they are really happy. No. Um, you know that during one and a half year we, could, we couldn't play and they were really impatient. We are going to rehearse the beginning of next week and everybody is really excited. We exchange messages between us. Uh, that's that's you know, dozens every day, saying that yeah 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 we're gonna we're gonna restart. It's gonna be great, and uh, we are all impatient to, to to start again. It's a really nice little team, very dynamic, very uh, very positive, and it's really nice to be in that in this kind of atmosphere. I was going to say, I assume that keeping that team for so long as well. Everybody knows their place. Everybody knows what needs to be done without every anybody actually interjecting, saying, "Oh, you need to do this. You need to do that." Everybody already knows yes. their place. They know what you guys want and need. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, um, and yeah. we can. We, we 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 don't need to talk a lot. I'm gonna maybe stop a little more light. Um, we trust each other, and we know that each of uh, each of the guys in this in this little commando knows exactly uh, what he has to do, and we know that we can trust each other. Um, it's, <laughs> it just it, it's, it's exactly. just an oil, uh, a well oiled mechanic, well, and it, it's 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 really, yeah. it's really nice to work this way. That's uh, that's that's the best way to work, isn't it? Third attempt by the cat. 
back to grab the attention. <laughs> no, I don't know. I was away for one week, so ah. I some revenge to to take. Ah, and he's so happy to be there. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So when you first started, did you expect that you'd still be going today? No, of course not. That's that's the thing. <laughs> um, it's something that I that I realized uh, a few weeks ago. Forty years ago, I I, I said uh, I think this band is going to be dead in six months. Uh, so I spent my entire life saying that for forty years. This this band is going to be over in six months, and. Uh, and then I spent 39 and a half years of my life having to stay, uh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. That is brilliant. How do, you, um, how do you work together to create music? Do you write the lyrics first? Do you do you the know, music it's first? It's always the music that starts, and it starts generally starts with a, a bass line and the drums, and then the melodies come, and when... It all uh, by itself without lyrics. Then it's the time to um, to write the lyrics, and then for Richard to add the, uh, the 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 vocal answers and to add the excitement to make it uh, to make it work and to be over excited life sort of. So yeah. it's always the same thing. We have we have tried uh, because at some point we thought maybe. We could do things exactly in reverse, starting with the vocals and going. No, but um, we are not musicians. We have, and we uh, we never wanted to be musicians, and 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 uh, we could never work that way. We tried, we tried to do everything in reverse. It never worked. It took us a lot of no. effort, and we didn't get anywhere. So we thought, okay, no. we have one way of making music. Uh, of, of making music, and we're gonna we're gonna stick to that because yeah, that's it, that's it. Why change? It works. Yeah. Um. So there's so many bands now in this in this EBM yes genre, yeah, and you can hear them all taking little influences from you guys. Do you find that um, kind of a praise? Uh, personally, I I have no I have no no real feeling about that. I don't really care. Um, no. Sometimes I, I I don't read magazines very often, and I rarely listen to music. Sometimes ah. when I'm aware, somebody tells me, oh, this band quoted you as an influence. I say, okay, maybe, yes, maybe not. Um, no. It's not important. Um, no. That's not, that's not a motivation. What I, what I think about this kind of music when I... Sometimes I go to festivals and I, um, yeah. I, I listen to these types of bands. Generally, what I, would, what I think is that they sound very much the same, uh, not only between mm. bands, but one band, when it starts playing, when they start playing, I think, okay, this, after two songs, I have the impression that I have heard everything. Uh, the third song is very close to the second, very close to the fourth, to the fifth. And um, yeah. so what I like is uh, the people in this type of... of um, in this genre, in this niche, people who can make a difference, and there are, there are, there are not so many. I know Daniel Meyer, for example, the, the German guy from the band Outjob. I really like what he does. I think he makes a difference. There is a very funny, but at the same time, very romantic band called uh, Rumor Snuff um, that I really like also because on stage they are absolutely fantastic. And uh, so I have, I have maybe yeah three or four bands that I think Covenant also is, is really good. Um, mm. The VNV Nation also very efficient. Yeah, uh, I do like VNV Nation. Very well done. Um, but I think that's almost it. I know that I'm I'm aware of, of dozens uh, 
maybe above 100 of other bands, but uh, these are these are my favorites. But yeah. it's, no, it makes it's sense. very personal and subjective and com completely irrational, of course. Yeah, and it's and I guess that it, on the end it's down to a personal, yeah. Yeah. personal. Everything sounds different to each other, everyone else, doesn't yes, it? Yes, and, and also uh, there are some of the people in in this band. At some point, uh, by by coincidence, by chance, uh, we just became friends. And uh, and of course, when you have a friend in a band, automatically you have a tendency to think, oh, this is this is this is nice to hear what he does. You have more, um, you are more open to their music, and uh, so yes. it's, 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 that shows how, how uh, subjective it, it can be. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Um, out of, I mean, you you must have done so many live concerts, gigs. Um, what's your most memorable? Oh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a hard one. Out of all the ones you've done, I mean, that's a lot. I, I, I want to... Here, I can only be a sort of... I don't know if that word exists in, uh, in English. Chauvinistic. So, yes. Does that exist? I, I yes. think uh, playing in Brussels in this wonderful venue called the uh, AB... And that is the uh, shortening for Ancienne Belgique, Old Belgium. Um, with our family, friends, people that we have known for, uh, for more than 40 years, you know, I have a tendency to believe that um, what is generally said about the energy channeled from the audience yeah. to the stage, that's big bullshit for me. I never felt anything like that. Except maybe in that place, and not all the time, because we must have played there uh, already 20 times. Two or three shows, I could feel uh, something that was bigger than me, moving me, and I thought, oh, that's probably, I am exper experiencing the, uh, the miracle of the energy conveyed to me by the audience that I can, that I can give back. That was very short, but that was very intense. And um, but we have we have wonderful memories of, of concerts in Chicago, in the Spain, uh, in Mexico, where the people got really mad. It's uh, you know it, it's it has never been and it will never be a routine. We never no. go on staging. Okay, another concert. We're gonna do the same again. No, it's never like that. It's uh, every concert. It's always the first one, and we have to prove everything. We have no status. We are we are shaking. Uh, we are we are full of. Um, we, we, we we just we are stressed. We are stressed. I, I really like stress because that's a that's a signal. It's not it's not nice, of course, but that is the signal that you really want to be at your best all the time. And I have never wow. been on stage. Uh, thinking, I am going to do an ordinary show. Never, never. Even That's if fantastic. sometimes we were really bad, at, I know, at some point uh, you cannot control everything. If the sound system is bad, if uh, if you don't feel good personally, maybe after a while you, you just sort of decline and, and, uh, and, and you are not up to your normal status, but uh, when we come on stage, it's always to give the best possible concert, always. If it was not the case, right. we would have stopped a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's it's do it your best or don't do yeah. it at all. You give it your all. That's yeah. brilliant. Uh, and I've got to ask this question. I've heard several different reasons or ways that you came up with the name Front, to, Front 242. Uh, uh, probably all of them are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> There was no reason uh, when it, 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 it's in fact Daniel. When Daniel started the band, he was looking for for a name that could be uh, advertised, um, that a name that would be that would sound good and would be very visual, and that is the best the best idea that he had. And I know that after that, we joined the band. Uh, 
Patrick and I, and then Richard a little later. After that, and, and Patrick and I, we arrived, um, we landed in the band a few months later, and uh, we thought the name was perfect, so we never wanted to change it. Um, yeah. There are reasons that were found later, saying that 2 for 2 was the number of a resolution by the uh, United Nations to recognize the state of is uh, the, the state of um, um, Palestine and things like that. It was the name of a of a car made by Volvo. It was uh, at some point there is this high. Um, I jumper called Patrick Seberg or Esberg, who said, oh, two for two, because he broke the world record two meters, 42 centimeters. And he said, no, I have a, I have a sort of monopole about <laughs> this number. Um, but no, these, all these explanations came later. Daniel just found that, that name um, because he thought it sounded good, it looked good, and that is it. I was going to say, it actually, it, it looks very much like a brand. Yes, sort of, but he, he, yeah. he imagined that from, from the beginning. So I, I, I told yeah. you, he, was, um, he studied visual arts. So he, yeah. and he was very much into sound. He was a drummer originally before starting to do and getting interested in electronic, uh, electronic instruments. He was a drummer. So he was very much at the same time into graphics and into music. And that is what brought him to that uh, to to this idea. Oh, it's a, it is a brilliant idea because it is it is an iconic brand, isn't it? Which is brilliant. Um, I mean, obviously, this question I think you've more or less answered. But it's are you looking forward to getting back on stage? I am a bit afraid personally because yeah. I'm, now I'm uh, quite way ab above sixty. Uh, okay. Um, and the first concert that we are going to make, and that's exactly two weeks from now, that's a, a big festival in Belgium. I know the stage is really large. I am still in a, in a good physical shape, but um, the question is always, okay, are you going to be able to, to be uh, an active performer during one hour and 20 minutes. I'm not sure. I think I'm ready, but you never know. You know, at some point the age is there. So we will see. I'm, I, I'm, I really, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But um, now, as usual, we will, we will do the best we can. Best we can. And uh, we will see. Maybe sometimes reality can be, can be cruel. Uh, we're gonna yes. see. We're gonna see. Um, yeah. What will what will take place will take place. Exactly. Can... Any plans for any new albums? We have new songs. Um, between three that are that we are going to play on stage, um, there are several following that they will be introduced slowly. Um, not in a hurry. We have uh, concerts during more than one year now, so slowly we're going to see, we're going to check the reactions from the people to the new ones, add probably other ones also, and we're going to see. At the moment, um, when we see that we have seven or eight that work on stage, we might envision uh, the making of an album, but we have, you know, the last album that we did a long time ago, it, didn't change anything no. to our career, so we don't feel obliged to do anything. I mean, we are. It's it's no. really nice for us to be uh, to be uh, on the road again. But when it comes to an album, okay, if we feel that the songs are good enough and and uh, we could do that, but we there is absolutely no pressure. No, no, well, that's the best way. It's just it's a relaxed way of. Yes. Going along with it. Go with it. Well, I think that is about it. Okay. But it is. It has, John Luke. It has been an absolute pleasure uh, for me too. I'm sorry for all the all the trouble that it do. No, no, it's not. It's <laughs> not really trouble. It's a uh, the technical. No, it's, the, it, the, it happens, uh, doesn't it? The, of things is always important, but it finally happens. happened, and uh, and that's great. Thank you for your questions. Yeah.
No, thank you very much as well. And uh, I hope your concerts go well. And I hope one day that I get to see you guys. <laughs> well, if one day you're in the venue, don't forget to say that you're there. <laughs> I will Generally, do. I will do. The, I will the, do. the venues are nice. The dressing rooms are okay, and there is uh, there are nice alcohols in the in the dressing room. So come and uh, come to say hello, and uh, and, and let's for a while. You will be welcome. Thank you very much, John Luke, and thanks to Patrick as well for putting me in contact with you. Yep. And I wish you all the best, and I hope we can do it again sometime. Thank you very much. I wish you the same. Take care. Thank you very much. Good night, Bye. John Luke. Bye.